Hello, this is Team Divergence. I, along with my group members, Akash, Jerome, Soban, Saad, and Anovish, will be taking a few minutes to inform you about the issues related to agricultural income tax. The implementation of agricultural income tax is a controversial issue in Pakistan. It raises a heated debate amongst those who support it and those who are not in favor of it. Due to this agricultural income tax issue, the government is unable to meet its set target of revenue, which eventually leads to a budget deficit. There are many reports produced which study the agricultural taxation. These commissions gave their own views about this matter. The report of the National Commission of Agriculture is against the implementation of income tax on this sector. It states many reasons for this. It believes that the agricultural sector has its own risks. Their income can fluctuate sometimes to extremes. There are many natural factors involved which increases their dependency. There is no insurance involved so farmers can easily lose all that they have. Farmers don't even have access to sources of credit. If a farmer loses all his savings, they fail to produce, which adversely impacts the whole country. However, the National Taxation Reforms Commission supported the implementation of income tax on agricultural sector. It believes that there are a great number of people who have good enough income. There is resentment among trading and industrial sectors as they find this unfair. This leads to tax evasion amongst businessmen and professional income taxpayers. Many have taken advantage of this by showing their black income as white. Uh, by showing it as agricultural income. Agricultural income bears the heaviest burden of indirect taxes. Agricultural income is supported on the grounds of horizontal equity. Some argue that the agricultural sector is in bad shape, but other, others who are not doing well economically still have to pay taxes. Now we will further move on to discuss the arguments in favor and against of the agricultural income tax. Speaking of arguments against income tax on agriculture, it's important to mention that tax collectors and taxpayers will find it burdensome as agriculture in Pakistan is mostly of self-supporting type, unlike commercial type where records are maintained. The farmers do not have uniform and standardized cost and return accounting of the records and the assessment of the net revenue is complex. Secondly, due to large number of farmers and the difficulty to reach them in scattered and distant places throughout the country, it would create significant time and money loss if the potential taxpayers were ever contacted. In spite of its theoretical appeal, the imposition of agricultural income tax in Pakistan seems neither to be predictable nor justified on any grounds whether economic, social or political. The fact of the matter is that agriculture in Pakistan is subjected to all kinds of direct, indirect and implicit taxes and the practice continues unabated. It is true that that contribution of direct taxes in agriculture is minuscule but it is also a fact that it is overburdened with indirect and implicit taxes and that could be the underlying reason of low share of direct taxes. Mr. Qureshi in Incidents of Taxation in Pakistan writes that taking the tax system as whole Incidence studies have shown that agriculture accounts for the payment of 35 to 46 percent of total tax revenue in Pakistan. As agriculture uh, generates only 23 percent of national income, the tax burden in agricultural world at least be double that of non-agricultural sector. Thus, the land-based agriculture income tax policy can hardly be recommended for implementation even on administrative grounds. Now, if we talk about the arguments in favor of agricultural taxation, it is unfair and illogical to make distinction between agricultural and non-agricultural income for taxation purposes. The traders, producers, industrialists and servants are paying taxes, then why not the agriculturists? They are big landlords in our country, so they should also be contributing their share to the state. If agricultural sector is taxed, it will equalize the burden of taxation between agriculturalists and non-agriculturalists on one hand and landlords and cultivators on the other hand. Hence, it will be able to rectify to some extent the regressive character of our tax system. There is also a considerable evasion of income tax by those having both agricultural and non-agricultural income. Some part of their non-agricultural income is shown by them as their agricultural income, thus evading the tax. So extending income taxes to agriculture sector would reduce tax evasion. Lastly, income tax on agriculture sector is more elastic than land revenue as the output per acre increases due to better input which benefits mainly the large farmers. Income from agriculture sector have risen considerably 
but yield in terms of direct taxes from agriculture has not increased much. Furthermore, the agriculture share in GDP is about 26%, while its contribution to total tax collection is 4%. So there is a logic to impose tax on agriculture income. Also, the budget deficit of Pakistan increasing day by day. So imposing tax on agriculture income can help in reducing this deficit and increase government revenue. So speaking in terms of the solutions, the system of agriculture income tax is helpful in achieving the most cherished goals of economic development such as equitable income distribution, poverty elevation and resultant better nutrition in the rural areas. It has also been argued that the income based tax system would be income and price elastic and would rid the economy of most of co costly and politically sensitive periodic land assessments for increasing in government's tax revenue from agriculture. The introduction of agriculture income tax may prove to be cost effective as tax assessment and collection may be undertaken by the income tax department and the services of the provincial revenue departments would no longer be needed after repeal of land revenue system. Finally, the higher tax rates for the well-to-do may restrict mass consumption by the rich and the policy may ensure stability of the prices of most of the consumer goods. The two-tier system of agriculture taxation has also has all the desirable characteristics of a rational tax policy, for example a proportional land tax based on owner's farm area, whether cultivated or not, is preferable over the graduated land tax because it will keep the tax base stable and relatively broader and will reduce the temptation for undue subdivision of holdings and will avoid the possibility of declining absolute tax revenue over time. It will basically ensure efficient use of resources and also in case of crop failures and market gluts, tax payments by farmers will automatically be reduced for relief against natural calamities. The tax may be implemented through the local bodies administration to avoid any additional cost as the local bodies in the recent past were collecting a similar tax on agriculture commodities. The tax in addition will avoid tax evasion as the farmer will be easily approachable at the marketplace. So there will be less corruption because the tax collectors will be closely supervised. Thank you. For many years, agricultural income tax has been a major issue of Pakistan and the government has to come up with ways to tackle this. Uh, we presented both sides of the arguments in our video and we hope you learned a lot from this. Thank you for watching.